Hello and welcome to English Language and Literature. My name is Basit Muhammad, and today we will be discussing Christopher Marlowe's play Tambalane. Christopher Marlowe's play Tambalane was written in the late 16th century during the height of the Elizabethan era. The play tells the story of a shepherd named Tambalane who rises from humble beginnings to become one of the most powerful and feared conquerors in the world. In Act One, we are introduced to Tambalane, a shepherd who desires to become a conqueror and rule the world. He declares his ambition to his friends and eventually sets off on his journey towards greatness. Along the way, he encounters the king of Persia and his army. Tambalane challenges the king and his army, and despite being vastly outnumbered, he emerges victorious. Tambalane's reputation as a fearless warrior spreads quickly. And he soon gains a following of loyal soldiers. Tambalane then sets his sights on other nations and kingdoms, including the Ottoman Empire. He leads his army into battle against the Ottomans, and his military tactics and strategic planning result in another victory. Tambalane gains even more power and prestige, and he continues to expand his territory by conquering more lands. One of the famous dialogues from Act One is when Tambalane says, "I hold the fates bound fast in iron chains, and with my hand turns the wheel of destiny. I govern fortunes and determine fates." This line reflects Tambalane's belief in his own power and ability to control his destiny. Another important moment in Act One is when Tambalane meets and falls in love with Xenocrate, the daughter of the Egyptian sultan. Their love story becomes a significant part of the play, as Tambalane continues his conquests while longing to be with Xenocrate. Overall, Act One of Tambalane sets the stage for the rest of the play, showcasing Tambalane's rise to power and his determination to become the greatest conqueror in the world. Act Two of Tambalane begins with Tambalane continuing his conquests, this time against the Egyptian Sultan and his army. Despite facing setbacks and challenges, Tambalane eventually emerges victorious once again, capturing the Sultan and his daughter Xenocrate. Tambalane's love for Xenocrate is tested when she expresses her loyalty to her father and her own nation. Tambalane is torn between his desire for her and his need to maintain his power and dominance. In the end, Xenocrate decides to stay with Tambalane, pledging her allegiance to him. Tambalane's ambition continues to grow, and he sets his sights on the powerful nation of Babylon. He leads his army into battle, and after a fierce fight, Tambalane emerges as the victor. He proclaims himself the emperor of Babylon and becomes even more ruthless and tyrannical in his rule. One of the famous dialogues from Act Two is when Tambalane says, "Nature that framed us of four elements, warring within our breasts for regiment, doth teach us all to have aspiring minds." This line highlights Tambalane's belief that human beings are naturally driven to pursue power and control. Act Two also introduces Bajazeth, the defeated emperor of the Ottoman Empire, and his wife Xenocrate's sister Zabina. Bajazeth becomes a prisoner of Tambalane, and his wife Zabina vows to take revenge against Tambalane for her husband's humiliation. Overall, Act Two of Tambalane continues to showcase Tambalane's ambition and conquests. While also introducing new characters and conflicts, the play explores themes of power, loyalty, and the consequences of ruthless ambition. Act Three of Tambalane begins with Tambalane's army continuing its conquests, this time against the city of Damascus. Despite facing strong resistance, Tambalane ultimately emerges victorious and claims the city as his own. He also takes the queen of Damascus, Zabina. As his prisoner, Tambalane's power and reputation continue to grow, and he becomes more and more ruthless in his rule. He begins to demand absolute loyalty and obedience from his followers, and anyone who questions his authority is punished severely. Meanwhile, Zabina plots her revenge against Tambalane, enlisting the help of her husband, the defeated Ottoman Emperor Bajazeth. Together. They hatch a plan to defeat Tambalane and reclaim their respective thrones. 
One of the famous dialogues from Act 3 is when Tamburlaine says, So from a shepherd to a king I pass, crowned by the mightiest monarch of the earth. This line reflects Tamburlaine's journey from humble beginnings to becoming a powerful conqueror. Act 3 also introduces the character of Calipine, Bajazetha's son, who seeks to overthrow Tamburlaine and claim the throne of the Ottoman Empire. He forms an alliance with the defeated king of Persia, and together they plan an attack against Tamburlaine. Overall, Act 3 of Tamburlaine continues to explore themes of power, ambition, and revenge, while also introducing new characters and conflicts. The play builds towards a climactic showdown between Tamburlaine and his enemies, highlighting the consequences of ruthless ambition and the fragility of power. Act 4 of Tamburlaine begins with Tamburlaine facing a new challenge, the combined forces of the Ottoman Empire and the King of Persia are now united against him. Tamburlaine remains confident in his ability to defeat his enemies, however, and begins to plan his next moves. Tamburlaine's army faces setbacks and challenges, but he continues to push forward and conquer new territories. He even manages to defeat the Ottoman Emperor Bajazeth, who is kept as a prisoner in a cage. Meanwhile, the character of Xenocrate, Tamburlaine's love interest, becomes increasingly prominent in the play. She advises Tamburlaine and tries to temper his ruthless ambition, but ultimately she is unable to sway him from his path of conquest and domination. One of the famous dialogues from Act 4 is when Tamburlaine says, The world is not enough for Tamburlaine. This line emphasizes Tamburlaine's insatiable thirst for power and conquest. Act 4 also features the character of Mycetes, the defeated king of Persia, who seeks to ally himself with Tamburlaine. Mycetes ultimately betrays Tamburlaine, however, and tries to have him killed. Overall, Act 4 of Tamburlaine continues to showcase Tamburlaine's ambition and conquests, while also delving deeper into his relationships with other characters. The play explores themes of power, loyalty, and betrayal, as Tamburlaine's enemies plot against him and his followers question his leadership. Act 5 of Tamburlaine sees the culmination of the play's conflicts, as Tamburlaine faces his final battle against the Ottoman Empire and the King of Persia. Despite facing overwhelming odds, Tamburlaine remains confident and determined to emerge victorious. The battle is fierce and brutal, with both sides suffering heavy losses. Tamburlaine ultimately emerges as the victor, but at a great cost, Xenocrate, his beloved, is killed in battle. Tamburlaine is devastated by Xenocrate's death, and he begins to question the meaning of his conquests and his pursuit of power. He also faces challenges from within his own ranks, as some of his followers begin to doubt his leadership and question his actions. One of the famous dialogues from Act 5 is when Tamburlaine says, Nature that framed us of four elements, warring within our breasts for regiment, doth teach us all to have aspiring minds. This line reflects the play's exploration of human ambition and the desire for power. The play ends with Tamburlaine contemplating the nature of power and the transience of human life. He ultimately dies, leaving behind a legacy of conquest and domination, but also a sense of tragedy and loss. Overall, Act 5 of Tamburlaine brings the play's conflicts to a dramatic and tragic conclusion, exploring themes of power, ambition, and the cost of conquest. The play raises questions about the nature of leadership and the consequences of ruthless pursuit of power, while also showcasing Marlowe's skill at creating compelling characters and complex conflicts. This was The Wrap. I hope you enjoyed this summary of Christopher Marlowe's Tamburlaine. Don't forget to like and subscribe to English Language and Literature for more videos on classic literature. Thank you for watching.